Hey guys, this is Game of Cow. Welcome back to the Genius of Sephiroth. And uh, last time, we basically made our way through Moon Zuko again and got a whole bunch of cool items, some of which we may well end up seeing here, and most of which we probably won't, but some of them we will. So, we're at the end of the stage, of course there's going to be a boss fight, and as a result I have a party set up here, and it is as follows. I mean, we have the cap camouflage is still a pretty good formation I feel here, so let's just go over the, the members here. So, main changes on Satori from the stage build is that instead of the poison lily she has the untouchable goggles because I don't think poison actually does anything in this fight and some more evasion is definitely a decent thing considering the buff to you know the, the actual evasion and stuff here that could be useful. She also has a billboard because physical attacks you know kind of a thing. Alice doesn't have the Melon Sword because uh, Commander Yomu has the Melon Sword still. Since Yomu is going to be used in the next stage most likely, I kind of want her to get the plus 5% experience here. Uh, instant death might happen, so there is protection against that, but otherwise it's just the same general stuff as before. Uh, resistance and magic defense up. So don't really make too much of a difference here, but the aluminium armor definitely helps giving some slash resistance, and platinum shield is a defend all, so pretty useful there. Marissa is much the same as before, except she has a minor slash resistance and a muscle belt for extra HP. And just in case I'm not attacking in a turn with her, she has the shield of darkness, because dark type attacks in a sort of neverworldy area, yeah, kind of, kind of thing, I don't know, darkness, it probably won't even make a difference, but it's there just on the off chance. Uh, Remu has the dark resistance as well as the magic ring, because fantasy heaven is expensive and I want to have some MP for casting other stuff, because even after MP down, uh, MP cost down, it's like 29 to cast or something, it's quite high, so she needs a bit more MP and that's why we have that. And then Sunai, much the same as before, except she has the Echo Amulet because light attacks are pretty much not going to happen here, for relatively obvious reasons I guess, so there is that. Uh, Raymond's shield doesn't have any significance, it's just because I don't have a better shield to use for her at this point. So then we got the growth tree stuff, which uh, Satori is now running complete status inducing stuff here. So the id is for variety, for buffs and debuffs, and uh, yeah, uh, it's for debuffs when it comes to Satori. And she needs as much debuff inducing power as possible for this fight, so. There is that. Uh, there aren't really any skills to learn, and even though I would like the cost downs and uh, damage up and stuff like that for, for this, it's not worth it compared to the status power. I really do need as much of this as I can get. And then because I had spare, uh, you know, a couple of spare points, I just placed them here to get cooldowns and uh, MP down. Ideally I would like, you know, cooldowns minus two as well, because then I could use the debuffs every turn. but. I cannot do that, so whatever. Alice, I managed to get enough points to have her shield skills come down by 50% now, which is fine. Doesn't really matter too much because she isn't really going to run out of MP, but it's there anyway and it's kind of neat. You could just put it here instead. The craft tree gives, would give you plus 40% physical defense on your shielding at that point, which is nice, admittedly, that might well be better. So actually we'll do that, why not, and uh, go with that. Marissa, much the same as usual, except now she has 20 points in her magic tree, so she has 25% less cost to her attacks, which is very good. Uh, otherwise, yeah, same general stuff, master spots because we're on a boss fight and the non-spell cooldowns and damage and stuff here really does help actually for magic napalm so definitely go with that and then Remu, bit of a mismatch of stuff she doesn't have enough points to get to uh, 
exorcism, like level hero, more magic attack and stuff, and she doesn't have enough points to get anything else relevant. She's one point short of getting spirit sign damage up, which is actually a bit of a shame. I would really quite like that, but I don't want to give up the 10% MP, and I definitely don't want to give the MP cost, you know, up. So, unfortunately, I can't get this for a sign thing here, but that's okay. Finally, Sunai, I've given up her 50% state of, uh, MP cost down thing for, for now, because if anybody dies, they would get revived at 1 HP. Now she has a revive spell, there's a point of getting this far down. And yeah, they would only get revived at a single HP, and I would like to have at least a semblance of survivability. I don't know if it makes too much of a difference in the end. You could probably just cut three points here, cut these two points, and just get this back and have half MP cost. It would probably be better, but at the same time, I do quite like the idea of being able to heal for a bit more you know, health and whatnot, so that is what we're going with. Also, skill-wise, haven't quite gone to that yet, we're going to be debuffing physical attack and accuracy, as well as having Star Blaze, just because Star Blaze is a uh, light-based attack, Earth Javelin because it's powered up by the the eye might come in handy, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Alice hasn't learned any new skills, Marissa is once again boss mode into her sparks and whatnot. Remu has fancy heaven because power, you know, it's two two bombs and a fair cost, but with uh, with the MP cost down 25% we can cast this four times with our eight bombs and still have a lot of MP left to do other stuff, so that's good. And Sunai has, instead of the physical attack buff, we now have the evasion buff instead. If I hadn't have learned my revive by now, I would probably have the defense buff here. But I have, so we're gonna go with that instead. Should be noted, this doesn't have a cooldown because of my, uh, I believe my healing growth tree cuts the cooldown of this. And, uh, yeah, the, this has a one turn cooldown, but... I do kind of want the multi-target heal as well, because that could prove very vital here. So with that said, let's go and investigate the rest of this place. Um, yeah, that's that's what we we'll do. So this part is automatic, I can't actually slow this down at all, so if it's gone too fast then uh, that's unfortunate. But yeah, we haven't found any clues when we've gone through this place yet, so... Yeah, this might be a bit of a clue. <laughs> and now we're in control of the cutscene. So, enter Komachi. And she's doing pretty much the same thing she would always be doing. And that is sleeping on the job. Oh, man. So of course Reimu will um, do her best impressions of uh, Lady Shiki, and uh, that face. Yeah, it's it's not Shiki, but she is indeed awake now and looking rather angry, as I would be as well actually if I was woken up like that. But yeah, it's a good question though. Why is she here? <laughs> You're a bit slow on the uptake, aren't you, Komachi? Well, duh. So, yeah, I wouldn't want to hear that from Reimu either, given that Reimu took so long to freaking start looking at this incident and all that. But she is indeed slacking because she was sleeping on the job. And since when was it the Shinigami's duty to patrol Gensokyo? Also, if you were patrolling, why would you end up here? which is where you're pretty much supposed to be, right? Because the Shinigami takes uh, takes the souls of the dead over to Hygen, right? And that would be basically around this area, right? But yeah, patrolling isn't even part of your job, and that's not creepy at all. <laughs> 
Hello, Satori. Making yourself socially awkward as always. Uh, yeah. isn't going to ride on your ferry because she's not going to the afterlife yet. I mean, I I don't understand how Yomu works. Like, how... How do you even be a half-ghost? Like, I honestly don't understand how Yomu even works. How can she be dead and not dead at the same time? That's, that's just bizarre to me. But yeah, uh... Remu's like, hey, you're totally not the culprit, right? And uh, she's like, oh, Komachi's like, what? But it, it, there is a slight motive for stuff here because, uh, hey, the Shinigami is related to death. This mist has the feeling that you are being invited to death, so maybe she's just using the mist to get more uh, peep, uh, more like souls over. And stuff, but then you kind of think it's Komachi, so she's a slacker and uh, she doesn't even do her normal job regularly, so why would she give herself more of a workload? Yeah, we, we kind of. That, that is true though, Raymu doesn't accept anything in this game, so accepting that is kind of. Uh, yeah. But. I think you're going a little bit too far here, guys. This <laughs> there's no need for the insults. And Komachi's just like, oh my god, why are they still going on about this? That was uncalled for. That was equally uncalled for, and that's just rude. What does her chest have to do with this? Like, seriously, what? What was the point of bringing that up? And Satori's just like, uh oh. <laughs> if you knew something here, Satori, you should have spoken up earlier. But, yeah, there's. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, we've kind of pissed off, as you would have expected for such rudeness. Like, I'd be annoyed at that, too. So, yeah, we kind of have to deal with her now. So, fight time with Komachi. Komachi is most, almost entirely physical. She has, like, one magic attack, and granted that magic attack is fairly strong, but it's not too bad. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the half phantom attack here to have her resistance for the turn. It usually works, so hopefully it will work again here. Then we're going to Horidol and buff our agility. And uh, we may as well just sit this turn out with Raymu. Same with Marissa, they don't really need to do anything this turn. Uh, I don't want to risk stuff when I don't need to. So then we have that, and we will debuff the accuracy with Psychedelic Art. So let's just see how this goes. The debuff didn't land! Wow, that's pretty rude. But we do have something else here instead, and I think this is a turn I can't use half phantom attack twice in a row, so I think this is a turn where we're going to focus on sh on my like other powers here. So we'll put shield power, we'll put resistance buff up. I'm going to unfortunately give up one of my fancy heavens, but I'm going to block physical attacks on Raymu this turn, and uh, may as well fire off napalm and debuff her physical attack. So hopefully this will work out as intended. Her physical attack does get debuffed, that's nice. So when Komachi does uh, Price of Life, she, use, uh, she basically has a very very powerful single target physical attack. 
which is enough to one-shot pretty much everyone. Like, even Alice would have a hard time taking that on right now. So, Duplex Barrier was needed to nullify that. The reason I knew it was going to hit Reimu is because Reimu has the highest HP of all the party right now. By quite a distance, too. 171 is giant compared to everyone else. So, yeah, basically Reimu was always going to get hit by that attack. So, blocking it out with uh, Duplex Barrier was important there. Fortunately, it means I can't use Fancy Heaven this turn, so we're just going to use the Hakurai Amulet instead, and we'll Master Spark, and we'll try and debuff that accuracy again. Because Komachi is so heavily physical, uh, physically based, uh, if you can debuff her accuracy like this, she basically can't hurt you at all now. If you're using the Kappa Camouflage Evasion Formation, and uh, you like combine that with her... Um, you know, with debuffing her accuracy and buffing your own evasion, you kind of become untouchable to most of her attacks. And that's a pretty cool thing. So, yes. Uh, Sunai really doesn't have much else to do here, but I'm not going to... In fact, I may as well just show off the uh, thing here. She counterattacks physical with uh, a nasty nasty thing here, so we don't really want to be running physical attacks against it too much, but I may as well just show what she does. Uh, she, won't, uh, she won't be affected by the last word here from... She is, she's not possible to mind control, so... Yeah, we're not gonna bother with that. Yeah, there you go. She counter-attacks physical with Shinigami Scythe, so... Don't get hit by that, basically. It is a uh, close range attack that will inflict instant death on you if you're not careful. We have a resistance buff and Sunai, I think, still has the death guard on her, so... Didn't really do anything there, but yeah. I'm gonna cover Remu this time rather than uh, outright uh, duplex barrier the attack because I want to start going on the offensive here. I want to start using Fancy Heaven right now. Uh, the reason I didn't use it last turn is because I wanted to build the light land up a little bit further before I did so. Um, her physical debuff and yeah, her debuffs are still going to last for quite a while. The nice thing about raising Satori's id tree is that her debuffs last for a long time. So yeah, we just want to go straight for the attack here. She is weak to light and earth, so light based attacks are pretty good. Uh, obviously, Raymu is very good for that. And, uh, oh, this is actually not the attack I was thinking of. Uh, Money from Yesterday is a rather powerful move that does more damage if you deal damage to her, uh, to Komachi that turn. Thankfully, because of her attack debuff, it didn't actually kill me there, but it could have done a lot more than that, so I was kind of expecting Price of Life, but that's not what showed up. Um, unfortunately, Komachi can use money from yesterday without having to charge up for a turn, so that's really nasty, and she, um, fun fact, this is actually the second time I'm trying this fight, because the first time I didn't really set myself up quite as well as this, and she basically just used money from yesterday every turn. It's kind of unlucky when you think about it, but hey. That's just how it goes. So Earth Javelin doesn't actually do quite as much, but yeah. She can buff her physical attack stuff here, and that is not good. Sunai... Wow, only took 4 damage from that? Oh yeah, because Money from Yesterday is a dart based attack as well, so in addition to being a physical move and therefore debuffed by, my, uh, by the physical attack down, it's also yeah, a dart based attack, so with Sunai having the Echo Amulet on her, she took no damage from that pretty much. Still gonna heal herself because she's got nothing else to do at this point, and uh, honestly, Fancy Heaven, Final Spark, and Star Blaze should be enough to finish this fight. So, I think that's going to be it. She has like 8500 HP or something, and is fairly good against physical moves, but yeah. I guess she can also use Price of Life without a uh, 
a thing too, a uh, charge turn. They just become a lot more powerful when she does charge it up. But yep, yeah, final spot is enough to get the kill, and yeah, when you specialize for status condition stuff, uh, statuses are very powerful in this game. Very, very powerful. Never discount them, because they will definitely do some good stuff. Anyway, we actually have a new skill for Alice here as well, Artful Enchanter. It's a pretty nice one, if you've got the time to set it up. Usually Alice is just covering everybody else, so she doesn't tend to have the time to set up stuff like that, but it's not bad when you do. So yeah, these unexpected panels are such a waste of time. Ha! Huh, you're the one who started it, Remy. Uh-huh, yep. So we kind of just abused Komachi for no reason here. I don't know why you're being treated like this. Like, these girls are just mean. You still deserve it. Well, uh... Yeah, that's true. If you actually worked a fair bit more, Komachi, then you wouldn't have this negative, uh... This negative reputation. Yes, indeed. It's not just Shigi which is gonna let you... Yep, there's absolutely nothing going on in this place. So, what now? <laughs> ah, the brashness of these guys. But yeah, there's... Komachi doesn't know anything. Uh, would Shiki know? I wouldn't think so. Honestly, I don't see why Shiki would do this. She wouldn't want to risk it, right? Because it would be her... Um, her position on the line, right? Yeah, off of her head if she dared to, there you go. Because uh, the rest of the judges and all of that would... Uh, it would not be fun. So, yeah. So now what? We have no, we have no clue, right? Okay, Satori, what, uh, what have you got for us? Okay, what's up? What what's up with the mist? Mm hmm. Yeah, well, we've already established that one. So, what is the nature of the mist then? It's not exactly the same as death. Uh, <laughs> that thinking pose. <laughs> the Miasma and Makai, huh? Well, don't we have somebody from Makai in our party here? I mean, Alice was from there originally, right? So, okay. Well, I mean, if they're in Makai, that's gonna be rather hard to reach, right? But... At the same time, if the mist was coming from Makai, surely we would see it somewhere, like a, a opening to the place. Yeah. Ah. I don't know about scale being too big. Uh, I don't really know enough about Makai in order to save of that. But uh, maybe it's somebody who is from Makai then. There we go. So, Satori obviously doesn't know who it could be because she doesn't know enough people. But Alice does, right? Mm hmm. Or Patchouli can just say it instead. Because, uh, yeah, the Garden of the Sun. Because in the Garden of the Sun, there is. Yuka, right? Just a memory, blah blah blah. There we go. Yuka. Yes, indeed, Yuka. And Yuka is technically canon, if you like, for the Windows Tower games, because she was in uh, Phantasmagoria of Flower View. So, yeah, that is... That is a reasonable suggestion. Uh, I don't really know what Yuka would be doing putting mist up when all she cares about is sunflowers, but I don't know, maybe she turns yokai into sunflowers or something? I don't know. So yeah, that's pretty much it 
next destination is the Garden of the Sun. And that is going to be that. And then we just leave Komachi to a dead ideals because freaking Komachi. <laughs> that's it. Yep, they got we got what we wanted. So we didn't even say goodbye. That's that's kind of rude. Uh huh. <laughs> pouty face. Not quite as good as you, cause pouty face, but almost as good. I'm sure you will. Just watch out for Shiggy. So yeah, that was Komachi, and uh, how to basically tear Komachi a new one. If you have Byakuren, Byakuren makes that fight a lot easier because she has light based attacks, she can debuff very nicely, and basically enhance Satori's power to debuff too, so yeah. But with the defeat of Komachi, we get... that's kind of morbid, I don't know if that's exactly what Komachi does, but... Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. So we get some more stuff, the Inferno Blade. So I think that's a lance, and then there's obviously the the blunt weapon there, and we get the tier three weapons. So destroying Gohei, Sorcerer's Broom, Python for Sunai. The uh, I weapon Art Knight is actually another really good weapon. Salkia gets a ton of good weapons, and they're all pretty prominent in terms of the Slayers for the types of enemies you'll get to. Yes, the Guinness Book of Records is apparently in Gensalkia as well, so that's kind of fine, I guess. Um, Horai Greaves, I think Horai Greaves are not the one I'm thinking of. It's the next tier, I think, is uh, Alice's like best weapon for most stuff, but uh, yeah, we also get one for Satori, probably won't be making. Muramasa on the other hand, we almost definitely will be making, because I still don't have a weapon for Yomu yet. And then we get another shield, and some more armor for Satori, and a generic, I think this is a mid-tier armor? Uh, these might actually be, uh, they're plates, right? So they're probably heavyweight armors. And uh, yeah. That is what we have. So, let's quickly go take a look at them, and we shall end the part there. So now we're going to need other stuff, of course, to craft these. Um, I did say before the only place you could get the Celestial Peach was in the Neverworld, so... Bear that in mind, but if you want a fire-based weapon, the Inferno Blade is pretty good. And to be honest, fire is quite nice in the next section, so if you've managed to pick up a fire shard anywhere, then this is not a bad choice of weapon to get. It's quite powerful, and the fire damage increases very nice. Uh, stirrups, uh, stirrupes, however, I don't know how you would say that. I would say stirrupes, I guess, but uh, it's almost as strong, actually, as the Inferno Blade, and is a lightning-based weapon, which we could make, but again, I don't like lances, so whatever. And then the Aquamarine Hammer is a bit more accurate than the other hammers we've been getting, and is water-based. So that's not too bad. Look how many freaking rocks we have, jeez. That's kind of crazy. So, Devil Destroying Gohei gives more power to the um, Spirit Sign stuff. Doesn't give the plus two bombs of the bombs Gohei, but I don't think any other Gohei actually does give like two bombs in one go. Maybe the final ones do, but the synthesis item that we will need for tier three stuff is the Sunflower Seed. So we'll have to try and pick some of those up whilst we're in the next stage. So then we have the Sorcerer's Broom, which gives uh, plus two bombs. It's actually pretty nice. I believe in my original playthrough, this was one of the weapons that I made. And one of the things in Weekend I did not really address very much is the fact that you don't need as many items to craft stuff anymore as you used to. So this, I believe this weapon would have taken two magic mushrooms before. Or it's either this tier or the next tier that would have taken two mushrooms to craft. But you used to need 14 synthesis items to make all the stuff. You now only need 11, I believe, I was told. So you cannot just about make everything as you go along. Yet I won't be because that means grinding for all the sunflower seeds and stuff like that. So yeah. Uh, 
Next up we have the Python, which is very good against Paralysis, and actually induces Paralysis too, so this is actually quite a nice weapon too. Uh, Sonic gets some good weapons, to be honest. If I have the time for it, maybe I'll make this, because I haven't made Sunai's other stuff yet. But I would need to get more iron, because I need iron for Yomu's weapon too. Uh, slash based weapons all take iron, and there's a lot of slash based weapons to make, so yeah. If you're still using iron, then this could be kinda nice. Uh, Breath Reflect is not too bad, but it only works for iron, so... I don't know, like, it's okay. Probably won't be using it though. Just know that it's there because it can be quite nice. And then we have the Arnonite, which is uh, very good, or pretty good against Quick States' effects. Kinda nice. As you see, it's a huge attack buff from before. This is 57 attack compared to 80 attack on the Arnonite, so it's not Arnonite at all, it's Arnonite. I can't read. Apparently, whatever. I've always seen it as Ardenite, I don't know why. Anyway, the Arundite is good against Birds, Beasts and Plants, and as you can imagine being in the Garden of the Sun, we're going to be fighting a fair few of those sorts of things. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, the Guinness Book of Records has some magic defense and is good against Charm, so not too bad. But, again, like, Patrulli's weapons don't really give very much magic attack. And I generally feel like a staff with an element enhance is just better for Patchouli, because her books only give light and dark increases, and those are the spell cards that you can't use all the time. So, I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of them, but if I get enough sunflower seeds, maybe I'll make it just because I have 12 rocks, like Jesus Christ. So then we have the carbine, which is a very accurate weapon here, and has Slayer against Transcendence as well as uh, Warriors and Magicians. So this is nice, if you're struggling with the accuracy of her revolver here, then definitely consider the Carbine, because the accuracy increase is really good, and Natori can definitely take advantage of that. She loses the multi-strike capability, but that's not really too big a deal, because it's only 25% anyway, and it doesn't affect your skills and stuff. So this is just an outright upgrade, really. Very nice. Um, the Shanghai Greaves are the ones I looked at before, which give you plus 10% to HP. Uh, this, the Horror Grief stuff is good against Stun, which is not super useful, I'm not really too fussed about these, if I'm being honest. Like I said, it's the next upgrade, which is the good one. And then we have the Nudo Eye, which is good for electric stuff. Not really worth it over the previous eye, in my personal opinion, because the uh, Green Eyes has the poison damage up, which is most of what Satori is going to do at this level. So. My own judgement is to stick with the, the green eyes, so yeah. Then we have the Muramasa, which is basically just a straight upgrade of uh, the first sword that, she, uh, that Yomi gets. Her second sword actually does have a couple of slayers, which is nice, but I'm going to save the iron for the Muramasa, because it's just a lot more powerful. 74 attack, only a little bit less accuracy, but much more attack power. Which does actually mean that Yomu's probably not going to get used immediately in the stage, huh? Because I do need a Sunflower Seed before I can actually use her power. Mm, I need to think about what I'm going to do with that. Anyway, uh, I believe it was this shield was the next one we had, so this is actually quite a good shield. Uh, pretty decent evasion, physical defense is actually really high for just now, and it can avoid electric attacks too. The electric attacks are not too prominent in the next area, but it's still a pretty nice shield if you need just physical defense. So consider it, I guess, if you wish. And then what else do we get? We got uh, this for Satori. So it takes obviously Sunflower Seed stuff. This I will probably make though, if I get the chance. Because Induction Increasing is very nice, it uh, would give Satori a lot more uh, status inflicting power. And is very good against Confusion, so that she doesn't lose the ability to use her skills. The 
bomb up is not at all relevant until much later on though, so that's kind of a thing. Then we got these plates, which I did in the end say that uh, were fire based. So fire damage taken down. They are very good on defense as well. I think they're higher than any defense that we have right now. So maybe the earth one might be worth getting here because it's quite nice. Uh, yeah, you can see it has 82 defense and blocks a little bit of earth damage, which is not bad for the next area. And yeah, that is all the stuff that we got. So, this has been a bit of a shorter part because, well, Komachi didn't last as long as I thought she would, but hey, that's just what happens sometimes. That's what happens when you get the proper debuffs and everything, and she's not just killing everyone every turn because apparently she could spell card cast every turn, which is a bit unfair, but hey. That's just how it goes. So, this has been Game of Cow playing the Genius of Sapphiros, and next time we go ahead and tackle the Garden of the Sun. Gonna be an interesting one. Take care.